This here is my wife, Rachel Rambo. She'll be coming with me today. And this will be camping for two. And it's just a way for you to bond with your wife, your friend, or your fiance, or your girlfriend. And we're just going to show what we do when we go out camping and how to make it enjoyable. Working together is teamwork. It's a good way to um, bond in that way, you know, work on your teamwork skills. And that's very important. You know, and I, I don't want to say always go out here and practice survival because we're not meant to just rough it all the time. Sometimes it's important to go out there and enjoy it. So we're going to go over what gear we bring. You know, the temperature's kind of chilly right now, so gear changes as seasons go. But this is kind of for a 30 to 40 degree weather. It's probably about 35, 40 right now. So we're going to go over that kind of gear, what we use to cook with. I'm going to show you how I hang up our hammock and how you can sleep too in a hammock. And basically just show different teamwork skills that you can do to make the grunt work get over faster and get to the part where you're relaxing and enjoying it. So we'll get back with you when we find a spot and see you there. When you're walking out here and you're on your way out to your camp, just be kind of looking around for any resources that may help you. And that's that's part of it is knowing what the what the land offers you. And sometimes you can find some cool things to make your little camp out that much more enjoyable. You know, finding tinder, um, berries, like right now there's a lot of partridge berries and wintergreen berries still. And that's about what you're going to find at this time. There's not going to be your spring berries like brambles and such so just be on the lookout for little things some wild edibles lots of plantain in here and we can cook that up um, still the middle of winter but there's still food okay you know these plantains are huge out here so they offer a lot of food and that can be your greens so it's kind of cool knowing you know different parts of the terrain to help you in fire or making tea or food uh, there's a lot to enjoy you know take your time don't go fast just stop look around and enjoy it and do it together okay me and her have just kind of been walking around out here exploring she's looking for stones she wants to take home and polish and that's what makes it enjoyable is finding things to do don't just go on the camp just to go interact with nature. Okay, so we found a place here along the river. You can see that it butts right up to this huge ridge that goes way up. Okay, and we got some firewood here. We got a couple trees to hang our hammock in. We got a place to hang that bag there. My bag and my stuff here. We got a good sandy area for making a nice comfortable fire. We should be able to string the hammock up next to this. You know, we got some firewood laying around. You can see that's right there. You know, it's important to find a place with a good amount of resources to make your situation easier so you don't have to go far. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to string the hammock up while my wife goes and finds some firewood right next, right next to where we are here. And we took some layers off because we got kind of hot on the hike out so you just take some layers off so you remain comfortable. You don't want to sweat. You just want to be nice and comfortable out here. You can see we got a nice calm section of the river. You can hear the rapids upstream. So, me and my wife are just splitting up tasks right now. 
so we can get everything done real quick and then sit down and actually enjoy ourselves. So she's up there looking for firewood and gathering what we need to get the fire going. And I'm going to set up my hammock on this tree here and that tree there. So it's right by where we're going to have our fire and we can sit down and relax. And we have a nice view of the water on this side and on this side. And I'm going to show you real quick how I set up my hammock. Now this is a double hammock which there's a reason that I got that so me and her could come out here and enjoy sleeping in a hammock and I bring two pieces of rope that are about 10 foot long each so I got about 20 foot of rope right here it's 340 pound breaking strength so it's plenty strong for what I need it to do I come around this tree like this and I'll show you the other side up close okay. come around the tree Get it nice and even, come back up, pull it up a little bit higher, because you usually want it higher. And then what you're going to do is you're going to come around, you're going to make a bite in the line, you're going to cinch it down, creating a loop, okay? And it takes a little bit of adjusting, get it to where it's tight. Pull it back up to where you want it. Okay, and that leaves you with the loop to hook your hammock on, and I can pull on this rope here and tighten that. Okay, and that's the key. So we got that loop set. I'll bring you up close to show you the next one. Okay, so I brought you up close to do the second one here. Now, what I do is I first find center. Okay, I'm not centered right yet, so I get these even, pile it back up with my hand get to the right position that I want to be and I took this branch off here and we're going to utilize this too okay and you have gotta keep in mind when you take things you might be able to use it in some way instead of just throwing it out this is a big old beech tree right here okay so what I want to do is just take this line here and create a bite in it and I'm gonna pull this through itself creating a loop okay see how I did that right there and then I can pull on this to tighten this loop or loosen it which is something that I like to have a feature of you don't have to have multiple knots this is easy to undo boom I pull on it it's undone okay so if we watch again I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna create a bite in the line just a simple little loop okay just taking it twisting it over making a loop like this and then we'll take this um, tag end down here and we're going to pull it through the loop, but we're not going to pull it all the way through creating a knot. We just want to cinch it down, creating this uh, knot here. It's a slip knot where I can pull on this and tighten it. Okay? And then I can take and pull these two lines here to tighten it around my tree. Like that. So then what we do is I'll bring you back out so you can see the whole thing. We'll string our hammock up. And then we have the, the availability of pulling on this to tighten our hammock or loosen it if we need it to droop a little more. Okay, and then after you do that, you take these ropes and just tie a simple, just a one single knot over it to cinch this down, and that way it doesn't come undone. And it's still easy to untie. Okay, so here's my hammock bag, and I have these clothes pins here, which come in handy later on, and I'll show you how. You can see this is a lightweight hammock, it does not weigh anything, and it will fit two people. So we'll undo this, and this is part of the hammock, the bag itself is, which is very convenient. Okay, so we undo this, and then we just take our hook, and we're just going to string it on this loop here. Okay, and then I can pull this up like I explained, tighten this thing down over to this side. And I'm going to hook this one up. Okay. And then that gives me an idea, okay, well this is hanging way too low. So now I just need to bring this up, cinch this up, and bring this up as far as I can because it's going to need to come up a lot. I can bring this right to the edge. Cinch that hook right inside there. Get this up high and then tie this around it. Okay, I'm going to show you real quick up close how I did that. 
can see that I just ran this here. It's easy to undo with this big rope. Okay. We cinched our loop down onto our hook because we need to make this as tight as we can. And I want to bring this around the back side of this knot. One loop like that. Okay. Just let that rest like so. And then through that loop, I'm going to bring that tag in here, pull it through and just cinch it down. Okay, and what that does is keeps our knot from coming undone. Now when I sit in this, it's not going to loosen up on me. Okay, and that's how you do that. Me and my wife to relax in, take a nap in, or just sit in to enjoy the fire. Gonna get me some firewood. My job is to get firewood. The fun thing about doing this with a friend or your spouse, sister, brother, whoever it is, is you're doing things together and you are helping each other instead of one person just sitting there and the other one working. So you both feel like you're getting something out of it. It's just fun. Another good spot is going to be where all this debris from flooding washes up. If I can make it over there. You'll be so surprised how much of this stuff accumulates up to you. And it's all sitting above the water, so that cracking's good. That means it's pretty dry. Oh. Okay, so one of the reasons to be in sand is it's a nice, safe place to be without worrying about fire, you know, spreading or anything. It's easy to just take a stick dig a nice little fire pit out like this okay you can see how easy I'm just taking one hand and chopping this all up here it's just a good little place to to get a fire going okay and we're setting this up you know our hammocks probably three feet from me we don't want to be too close because we don't want any embers floating off and burning it on me now one thing you can do while making a little fire pit, if you want it to be a nice hot fire, you can make an H. What you do is just dig, you know, it doesn't have to be an H, it can be an X, it can be whatever you want it to be. You just get it, get the outline ready and make a nice cross section like this. an X or an H or anything that's going to allow air to get into where your fire is is what you're looking for and then you dig your center out like this and then you just dig the rest of this all out like that and then that allows air to blow in from here from here from here and from here into your fire which will keep it nice and hot you know if you didn't want to dig a Dakota fire pit or anything and dig down you know two feet you don't have to, you just do this for a nice quick hot fire. And that's what we're going to use is this. Okay, so we have our nice small little fire pit dug out here with our X's running through it to give it some air. We want a nice hot one. And I found this giant piece of pine bark here. And we can lay that because the sand's kind of wet. So we can just lay this down in there. It'll burn away eventually, but it'll give us enough time to get that fire built up. Because everything's kind of damp today. And we're just going to kind of form that in the hole like that. we got a nice nice sheet of it. There's a whole bunch of it back there. We'll just kind of line the hole with that. 
and that'll give us a good base to get our fire started. And we can use this other chunk to set other things on over here. Okay, and that little drawstring bag that I made out of that deer hide has become what's holding my fire kit here. Just got a loop in it there. So I've got different things in here. I got some Schaefer fuel in here in case I don't want to fire. I got some fat wood here that I'm going to use to start this fire. And uh, some wet tenders, a little bit of cordage, a lighter. I carry that kind of stuff in here just to keep it separated. And that way, when I need it, I just grab this bag and I got it. I don't have to dig around in my pack for it. Okay, so I want to just take one of these pieces of uh, pine and get the frilly parts of the bark off so it can catch my fatwood shavings. That looks like a good piece there. So now I'm just going to take all the good piece of fatwood I can find and just kind of shave it down. One thing you can do if you want to get your tea going or something, you know, you're getting a little chilly or something, you can uh, get your Schaefer fuel out. I carry this with me because sometimes it comes in handy. I used it a lot in Florida. Um, you, can, you can ignite this with the ferro rod or just taking a lighter and doing that right there. Like right now, that's giving off some heat. So then what I can do is set my ring on top of here, set my canteen, got all my water in it. We're going to get some tea going here. So this can already be going or I can be cooking other food, whatever I want more at that time, and I can get all that going while I'm working on the fire here. So now we have this going, I'm going to finish up the fire and then we'll be ready to rock and roll. You can see there that I brought just a nice chunk of deer hide. It's always good to bring like some type of, you know, canvas or something that you can lay down on the ground and set your stuff on, keep it from the moisture. Once we're done there, we can put it in the hammock here where my wife's sitting. She's got our wool blanket there. Fall asleep. Nice wool blanket will go a long ways on days like today. We'll be nice and toasty by the fire. And we could lay this deer hide underneath to get rid of some type of convection coming in because it's a real thin material and that deer hide will insulate us real well and then the wool blanket on top keep us nice and warm okay so now I got my ignition source laid down which is the fat wood now I'm gonna take all this small stuff and remember this is our backbone here for our fire lay and I got all this good small stuff here that my wife collected and it's got all that tinder all over it. This is that uh, lichen that we can use as tinder. And then what I'm going to do is bring all this stuff up to where I can reach it and just simply toss it right on the fire and let it start burning. And like I said, I can take this and push this up inside here after I ignite it. Okay, and then we'll just take and slide this up under here. Slowly bring our little pieces up on there to get them going. So we get ourselves a fire going, which now gives us the ability to start cooking our food. Okay, one thing we like making out here is croissants. And you can make your own dough at home or you can bring, we just brought packaged croissants. And Tyler already put one on the stick. You're going to roll it into like a little snake. <laughs> See if I can do it better than his. And if you don't do it like this, it's going to droop and it's going to fall right into the fire. And then you can watch the fire eat the croissant. Snake it around. Kind of press the sides down. Okay, and then what you do is you just take your stick, sharpen this end here, jab it in the sand, and let that sit right over the fire and give it a turn every few minutes or so. It'll cook quite quickly, okay? Okay, and the next parts we like to cook, just bring in some simple cheddar broccoli rice, 
and I always, you know me, I have a can of beans with me a lot. Simple food to carry out, it's got a lot of calories, it's going to fill you up, it's going to taste good. You can mix the beans and the rice together and what I like to do with this little pot here is just set it down in there and I can stick this thing in here to hold it in. So if any ashes or anything were to fall, it's not going to go nowhere. Okay, And then that will cook that up real nice for me. And then I just open my can up here and stick my beans up in there, right up in there. And that will uh, that'll give me a nice uh, little meal, me and my wife a nice little meal to eat. We're going to have buttered croissants. Okay, so now we got everything rolling pretty good here. Didn't take that long to get to this point. Everything's already almost cooked so we had a good hot fire. And, you know, we're by the water. You know, there's a nice little beach, you know, 10 feet away from here where we can just go clean all our dishes. If we need more water for tea, we got plenty of it right here. We just got to boil it. So it's ideal when you can get in a nice spot by the water because the water can help you, you know, wash your hands off. You get a bunch of food all over your hands. You're sticky. You need water for some tea or just a drink or to add to some of your food. You know, I like to come camp by the water because it's just a wonderful place to be and it's got lots of life and um, some cool scenery around it as well. So it's peaceful. Okay, our food's just about ready. You can see we brought just a couple paper plates and we have a, uh, just a grocery bag for our trash bag. You know, just bring convenient items. You know, bring a plate. Bring, you know, I have my titanium spoons that I bring. Little thing of cinnamon, little thing of oil, just little things like that to help you cook whatever you're planning on cooking. And you know, I bring dough out here a lot, some cornmeal works well. Now for our tea, I bring uh, infusers, and you could get some pine needles and put them in here, or whatever you're finding out here, some raspberry leaves or blueberry leaves, whatever you got around to make tea, you can use this thing and put them in it, and then you don't have the chunks floating around. And that's kind of what I'm going to do here, is make my tea in here. I brought a little bit of tea from home I'll put in here. And we have our water, you know, that we put on our Schaefer field that's already nice and warm and steep. So we can dump that right in our cups. Now I have a metal cup. My wife will be using just a nice uh, thermostat cup here. Keep it nice and warm for her. So you can bring those as well. Just have some metal ones to, to warm your water up in or boil it if you get it from the creek. And uh, you're ready to go. And then when you get your tea made, dump a little cinnamon in it. Give it some flavor. Okay, we got all our meal cooked up. Got our tea down here steeping. Fire is good and hot now, and we just threw some more logs on it. Just pulling the bread off the stick right now. So now we can just sit down, relax, and enjoy a nice meal and listen to the water. Okay, so. There you have it, we have a nice little meal, nice warm cup of tea, got the deer hide down there so she can sit close to the fire and just relax, and uh, it's pretty peaceful out here, so if you're ever looking for a way to just go out and relax out in the woods and kind of have a bonding moment with your, with your wife, your best friend, girlfriend, fiance, like I mentioned, you can uh, maybe go out and do a little camp cooking hang the hammock up, take a nap, whatever it is, you know, don't let, don't let nature always be about survival because that doesn't mean you're living then. Living is more important than survival. Learning survival is important in case something goes wrong while you're out here enjoying it, okay? And that's why you learn the extras. But this is what I do in my spare time, okay? Me and my wife will come out here and enjoy ourselves cook a nice little meal like this. We've got all kinds of recipes we've cooked out here. Sometimes, you know, you saw me and Jeremy pick the berries and put them in the pancakes. Um, we've cooked bread in a Dutch oven before and it was really good. 
Uh, this is just your more primitive way of cooking bread. But we'll come back with you with more of these videos. Because I like to give tips on camping as well and just enjoying yourself out here. And I like to show different things to do to enjoy your time out here. Because a lot of people like different things. You know, I mentioned my wife likes to find different stones and polish them and make jewelry. That's what she does with them. Me, I like to find things and practice my skills and maybe carve something nice or a piece of stone I can turn into something. I like to do those things. So when I'm out here, I'm always looking. My head's on a swivel. So get out here and enjoy it. Spend some time with the people you love out here. It's a great place to do that and get away from all the noise. No cell phone reception out here, like she said. Definitely none out here. Okay, I mentioned how nice it is to be by water for various reasons, you know, and when you're done, you just simply bring it by this sand here. This is a perfect little area where I don't have to get my feet wet or risk falling in. You just dunk your dishware in the sand like that and rub it around, using that sand to get everything off, rinse it all off good, and that way you're not putting dirty items in your pack. Even with, you know, your junk that's literally going to just be thrown away, rinse it out a little bit. Just put a little sand inside there, swoosh it around, and that gets all that debris out of there. So when you put it in your trash bag, it's not stinking really bad, or it doesn't accidentally spill and get all over your pack. Okay, and I bring, I bring a little camp towel with me just to kind of dry things off, wipe my face off, or whatever I need to use it for. And that way you're not getting water all over your pack. You just kind of damp, you know, touch this down. And that's ready to go in our trash bag, which we have right here behind. Okay, and you can see that in our nice double hammock here, we're good and cozy. You could easily just sleep here for the night. I'm plenty warm, especially with us two in here. Now I'm going to show you what I do with these clothespins. I like to just kind of cocoon myself inside here. So I'll just take and flip one there, flip one here. And you also, you don't have to lay how we are. You could lay one head down here, one head down here, and your feet, and that way it'll kind of make it more, could make it a little more comfortable, you know, if you're with a buddy or something, you obviously don't want to cuddle too close. But it works this way. If you just want to, you know, you can get in here and just kind of sleep nice and comfortably. You have no worries. It's a lot more comfortable in the ground. You just stay real close all night. Okay, and I always like to just take this thing and, like I said, I cocoon myself in here. So it's good and wrapped up and that holds a lot of the body heat in. You could put that deer hide below us if convection started to, to cool us down from a breeze. But this works real well. The way I tie it up takes literally five minutes. It does not take long at all. And you can adjust it up and down the way I showed you where you can pull that. Untying it super easy, and uh, it's real comfortable. So get yourself a double hammock, grab yourself uh, some food and some cookware, a couple other luxury items on the side, and uh, find yourself a good spot by the water, and just hang out for the day, bring some things you like to do, read a book, whatever it is you like to do, just come out here and do it. It's a great place to bond, and a great place to work on your team skills with your wife or whoever it is you bring out with you. So we will uh, see you all next time.